Warren, congratulations. Uh, it's a great blockbuster listing. Uh, how are you feeling and what do you have to say for people who got uh, allotment and some uh, people who've not, unfortunately? As far as our reaction to, uh, to this morning's listing, we are, we're really humbled by, uh, by the response from the markets. You know, we were expecting a positive response given the, uh, the indications before today, but it's, uh, it's certainly surpassed all of the, uh, the speculation that, uh, that had been positioned before the, the listing. You know, all that I can say to investors that, um, that have, uh, have managed to secure um, a, uh, a holding in our company is that, um, that we, we've worked hard to get here. We'll, conti we'll continue to work hard to, to build upon it. We, uh, we continue to be bullish about the, uh, the prospects for the future. We're going to invest in, uh, in extending the capabilities that we represent. Uh, tell us about the business now. And I know people will be hooked on to understand from you from here on. How is uh, the business looking next two, three years with your current order book? Has anything really changed? Uh you know, we, we continue to work hard to, uh, to, to close business and, uh, and our order book continues to, uh, to certainly improve. Um, there's no material change from, uh, from when we spoke a couple of, uh, of weeks ago, but um, we continue to uh, add opportunities to, uh, to our business development pipelines and, uh, and we continue to harvest opportunity within the existing customers that we are working on. I think I shared with you a couple of weeks ago that we... Uh, we fully expect to close the, uh, the year well and, uh, and we are working very, very hard to sustain the momentum into, uh, into the, next, the next fiscal year. Okay, so the momentum is likely to be sustained is what you're hinting at. But just to understand from you the automotive uh, business, which is a large part and chunk of your overall revenues, 70% uh, is what comes in from there. How do you see this uh, getting diversified? What more areas is the company going to be looking into, plugging into, which can get you better margins going forward? Well, our, our, our margins across the different industry verticals that we support are, uh, are relatively range bound. And so we do not expect uh, a material difference in terms of margins across the different sectors. But we are very excited about the, uh, the growing opportunity in, uh, in aerospace specifically. You know, I think I shared with you previously that we've been impaneled by Airbus. We've opened offices in, uh, in Toulouse and, uh, and Hamburg. We've rolled out IT systems to align with the requirements of Airbus. We've gone through various um, audits. We are now in a position to discharge a relatively sizable order book that we built with, uh, with our friends in Germany, the UK, and in, uh, in, uh, in France. And, uh, and we expect um, the revenue to, to start to flow this fiscal year towards the end of this fiscal year. And, uh, and we expect a, uh, a big jump up in, uh, in our Airbus business uh, next year. We're also excited about the, uh, the growing momentum in and around the group aerospace business. The, uh, the acquisition of, uh, of Air India, the procurement of 470 single aisle and wide body aircraft is providing tailwinds for, uh, for Tata Technologies and we're planning to, uh, to fully harvest the, uh, the opportunity that that represents. Okay, so aerospace clearly is one area which is going to be a big, uh, you know, focus uh, for you guys going forward. Uh, you said a big jump up. Can you quantify that big for us and give us a sense of how big is this business going to be or you're projecting it to be over the next, let's say, couple of years from where it is right now to how much are you seeing a potential growth with the kind of investments and focus that you are making in aerospace? Uh, again, I, I don't provide specific um, revenue or, uh, or margin guidance. But what I will say is that, um, that right now our automotive business is about 90% of, uh, of our services mix. You know, if we look three to four years out, I would expect that, uh, that mix to be much closer to 80-20 than 90-10. Uh, than Okay, all right. So that gives us a broad sense. Quickly to understand from you, because you are in a phase of growth and you're already talking about strong orders that you're likely to get, what is the kind of capex that you've lined up with opportunities that you see both in India and outside India? Well, we are, we're, we're investing in, uh, in infrastructure. You know, we are expanding our, uh, our global footprint um, as it pertains to uh, to uh, regions like Germany and France um, specifically. 
you know, we're investing in, uh, in IP uh, platforms that will accelerate uh, or enable us to accelerate uh, value for, uh, for customers that, um, that we represent. So those are the, the primary uh, targets for, uh, for, for CapEx, but we're also working hard uh, to identify opportunities on the inorganic side of, uh, of our growth plans. And, uh, and so, you know, that's, uh, that's something that, uh, that we would expect to be much more aggressive in as we, uh, as we look to, uh, to accelerate growth for the, uh, for the company. Okay, that, that, that uh, prompts me to ask you a very interesting question. When you talk of the inorganic growth opportunities and you say that you're going to be very aggressive there, what is the ticket size that one is talking about here and what area? Because um, you already are doing pretty well and, uh, uh, in, in the automotive and the aerospace business that you spoke on. What specific segment uh, or business are you looking to acquire? Well, what I'll say is that when we're looking at uh, inorganic uh, growth opportunities, there's really two vectors around which we, uh, we assess uh, opportunities. One is capability. You know, is there, is there uh, assets out there that will allow us to accelerate capability in, uh, in a particular area? And specifically areas like uh, embedded electronics, uh, software-defined vehicles, and, uh, and digital are, uh, are primary areas of, uh, of interest. Uh, and we're also looking at inorganic growth opportunities as a way of, uh, of entering into, uh, into new logos that we believe uh, have the, uh, the potential to scale with the ambitions that we've got for the company. You know, if there are top R&D spenders that we believe are progressive and, uh, and will benefit from the type of value that we represent, you know, if there's a way of entering those, um, those relationships through an acquisition, that's certainly something we're prepared to look at. All right, and finally, uh, what is your hiring target? How many people are you going to employ? Uh, what's your workforce looking like right now? And with what you've planned, how much more will be added? Well, we're, our headcount is about 13,000 people uh, today. Um, in the last three, four years, we've, uh, we've typically recruited between two and a half and, uh, and four and a half thousand people. Uh, we would expect to continue to uh, to recruit that many people in the uh, in the years to come. All right, that's uh, wonderful news. Thank you so much, uh, Warren, for sparing time and speaking with us. And once again, it's 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 a big day for you. Congratulations. Uh, may you continue to soar high. Thank you very much. Very proud day for all of us. Thank you very much for again for your interest in our company. Mm -hmm.